After up to four times stacking and destacking, Ship 25 and Booster 9 just conducted the first full stack test together yesterday. SpaceX has pumped its colossal beast full of the essential fluids needed in order to rehearse ahead of the second Starship launch. It won't be long until we witness a bold performance straight out of sci-fi that will happen in November. So let's get started on today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St the stacked Starship for the second orbital test flight has been on the launch pad for quite some time. And SpaceX has been conducting engine tests on that rocket as well as regular stacking and disassembly of its stages. Now all eyes are focused on the critical tests of the full stacked Starship before the flight to observe how the operation of this colossal spacecraft operates stably and safely. Even though SpaceX would have loved to have seen Starship make its second try to orbit by now, the rocket's time at the pad provides ample opportunity to test the rocket and ensure that everything is in working condition when it comes time. And it has finally happened. The most anticipated test, the wet dress rehearsal or WDR test, was carried out by SpaceX for the first time with the Starship 25 and Booster 9 pair on Tuesday, October 24. Filling the tanks up with propellants, often part of a series of tests dubbed as a wet dress rehearsal is one of the few steps before a test rocket can be cleared for launch. After hours of conditioning, the Texas Orbital Launch Site, also known as Starbase Giant Tank Farm, SpaceX opened the floodgates and loaded Ship 25 and Booster 9 with up to 4,000 tons of cryogenic liquid oxygen and liquid methane propellant in about 90 minutes. At approximately 2.55 p.m. local, SpaceX completed the process of loading propellant into Starship. A couple of minutes later, venting from below the rocket revealed that teams had also chilled the rocket's engines. Chilling the engines is another crucial step before launch since the extremely cold propellants risk damaging them if the methane and liquid oxygen flow through them without preparation. Ultimately, the total weight of the rocket and propellant exceeded 4,500 tons, as confirmed by SpaceX in a subsequent tweet, Starship and Super Heavy were loaded with more than 10 million pounds of propellant today in a flight-like rehearsal ahead of launch. This once again makes Starship the heaviest rocket in history, the next heaviest ever built being the Saturn V and the N1, weighing around 2,800 tons when fully loaded. SpaceX was also able to drain Starship and return its propellant to the pad's ground storage tanks about four hours after filling the rocket. After the company later confirmed that the test was a flight-like rehearsal ahead of launch, that further proves that the data gathered from it would help the performance of Starship and the orbital pad for flight-like operations. At no point during the wet dress rehearsal did SpaceX appear to enter any kind of hold or abort, indicating that the rocket's systems were all working well enough to smoothly completed on the first try. Besides that, SpaceX activated the orbital launch mount's fire extinguisher system, seemingly practicing the moments before the rocket would otherwise ignite its engines and take flight. That is the FireX system, dedicated to managing any fires under the pad with pipes running throughout the OLM. FireX uses a mixture of water and gaseous nitrogen. In this way, the flames are deprived of the oxygen that feeds them. Furthermore, the accumulation of oxygen and methane is also to avoid the creation of an explosive mix in the area of the pad that can easily be ignited. SpaceX will use both of these systems to protect the launch pad on a real flight because they serve different purposes. FireX clears out combustible gases that may collect beneath the engines before ignition to prevent accidental detonation. Also on Thursday, SpaceX once again conducted the next water deluge test after testing it just three days ago. While launching a rocket as massive as Starship is no easy feat, the launch pad is equally integral to the rocket itself. Hence, these tests are a crucial element in Starship's development. A notable feature we can observe is the change from the recent two tests compared to experiments conducted two months ago. This time, the test featured an extra storage tank and saw more water flow out to match the scale required to protect the launch pad from damage during a Starship launch. A huge amount of water will be ejected in less than 60 seconds and we seem to have the same pressure, but a longer duration. This is the result of more storage for water and high-pressure gas. Company recently added 82,000 gallons of capacity. 
Along with that, the high-pressure gas system now has nearly doubled the capacity since the last time this system was tested. SpaceX has had to follow a tedious process for its launch site to ensure rocket launch activity does not affect the ecosystem surrounding the launch pad. Cooling the pad and diverting the force of the engines away from the concrete and steel structures requires thousands of gallons of water and even though this gets converted into steam, an excessive flow of water to the surrounding areas during the full life cycle of the Starship program is a cause for concern to the wildlife. Notably, all tests at this latest launch site took place after officials from the Fish and Wildlife Service visited the testing site. They spent time evaluating the areas around the Starship launch pad. We have a positive sign for this matter as it's possible that the FWS is in the process of assessing everything as SpaceX continues testing to demonstrate its ability to minimize environmental impact. It won't be too surprising if we were to see them as Starbase again soon. However, for some odd reasons, SpaceX did not put this pair directly into a WDR test. Instead, we have many rounds of tests this time. The battery of tests began with the liquid oxygen subcooler emitting white smoke. Then came the tower ventilation and Ship 25 started loading liquid oxygen. Its liquid oxygen, bottom and liquid methane, top tanks, were then slowly filled to around 30-50% to 50 of their full volume over the next hour, which brought us to the awakening of Booster 9. We can clearly see frost on both the liquid oxygen and liquid methane tanks. While everything seemed to be coming to an end, Starship was then recycled and got frosty again. Although this is not a WDR as we were hoping for, this process is still very impressive. Thanks to the fact that they are incredibly cold at negative 160 to negative 200 degrees Celsius or around negative 260 to negative 330 degrees Fahrenheit, the thin steel tanks containing them are quickly chilled when filled. With no insulation to speak of, that supercooled steel then freezes water vapor out of the humid South Texas air, creating a layer of frost slash ice that generally follows the level of the cryogenic liquids in Starship's tanks. Throughout that process, those cryogenic liquids inevitably come into contact with the ambient temperature from the Starship tanks and plumbing, which are white hot in comparison, and warm up, boiling off into gas as a result. A gas is chemical is far less dense than its liquid form, meaning that the pressure inside Starship's fixed tanks can rapidly become unmanageable after even a small amount of boil off. To maintain the correct tank pressures, Starship, like all other rockets, occasionally vents off the gas that forms. Thus, we are left with the two main methods of interpreting the hieroglyphics of cryoprobe tests, which are frost levels and venting. Next, in addition to testing Ship 25 and Booster 9, SpaceX yesterday also successfully activated and tested the water deluge system in a highly captivating manner. And even though this gets converted into steam, an excessive flow of water to the surrounding areas during the full life cycle of the Starship program should carry some risks to wildlife. However, to be fair, Getting approval from government launch agencies has been a key bottleneck for the Starship program and SpaceX has spent months waiting for agencies such as the FWS and FAA to get environmental clearance from launch activities. The FWS evaluation is part of a border environmental assessment overseen by the FAA and even though FAA officials were optimistic earlier this year in stating that the second Starship flight could have taken place by November at the very least, chances remain that it gets delayed to 2024. Despite this timeline, SpaceX is still making efforts to provide positive signals that Starship could launch as early as November. Meanwhile, on the other side, SpaceX continues to build on its records. SpaceX has now completed its 75th launch this year maintaining a pace that is set to reach nearly 100 missions by the end of December. The goal for the next year is 12 launches per month raising the total number of flights to 144 with Falcon rockets. Similar to this year, most of these missions will primarily be dedicated to launching Starlink broadband satellites. As of the current time in 2023, over 60% of SpaceX's launches have deployed the company's own Starlink satellites into orbit. This highlights the significance of Falcon 9 flights for SpaceX's Starlink network. Last year, SpaceX conducted 61 missions. In 2021, 
the number was 31. In the past 12 months, SpaceX has launched 88 Falcon rockets in addition to a much larger Starship rocket test flight. The success of SpaceX in recovering and reusing the Falcon 9 rocket boosters and payload fairings is crucial to making this happen. SpaceX has succeeded its initial goal of launching each Falcon 9 rocket booster 10 times before a major overhaul, first achieving 15 flights and recently certifying a booster for up to 20 missions. Technicians can replace components such as engines, heat shields, landing legs and valves, showing signs of wear or issues during flights. With many launches planned for the coming year, 20 flights are likely not the end point. To increase the efficiency of SpaceX's launch frequency, engineers have shortened the turnaround time needed to reconfigure SpaceX's busiest launch pad in Florida to less than four days. SpaceX has also improved the turnaround time at the launch pad in California. Size that SpaceX stated that there is automation at every step, from startup handling to countdown operations to post-flight data assessment, where engineers search for near-miss mistakes that could be signs of reliability concerns. Additionally, recovering most of the rockets after each flight allows for detailed inspections to detect small issues before they become significant problems. All these activities increasing the launch frequency of Falcon 9 will enable SpaceX to deploy a higher number of Starlink satellites in the sky to meet the widespread demand for both civilian and military networks in the future. It has great technical difficulty and very high requirements for astronauts for which we are making relevant preparations. In the end, as it's been said many times before, allowing Starship to test is extremely important. Well if you like this video make sure to give a thumbs up. And subscribe see you in the next video thanks for watching, by the way are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app Talk? Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people, by delivering items door to for more information download the Talk Talk app here down below.